Hello and welcome to our very special Election 2020 coverage. This will be our first introductory episode. This will show us who our candidates are, what platforms they'll be running with, and the general information we need to know about the upcoming election in November. My name is Corey Camasso, and welcome to episode number one of Election 2020 coverage, right here on Critical Political Thinking. Hello and welcome to episode number one of our election coverage 2020. My name is Corey Camasso and I will be your host. Today we're going to be covering all the details about the upcoming election in November and we're also going to be going over just what it is that is going to make up this election, what kind of campaign each candidate will be running, and we'll go over a little bit about each platform that the candidates will be taking. So make sure that you stay tuned and pay attention because this upcoming election is one of the most important elections going back in history. This election, whoever inherits this presidency, will be inheriting a depression unlike anything we've ever seen before. They'll be inheriting unemployment numbers like we see right now. So while we are voting for a president, like in normal circumstances, we are also voting for a president that we know will be capable of guiding us either through continuing guiding us through or taking over and fixing whatever it is that we feel may have been wrong. So let's dive right into what we can expect in this upcoming election. The election is going to be Tuesday, November 3rd of 2020. We have two presidential candidates that have become the forefront runners and that would be Donald Trump, our current president, and Joe Biden, our former vice president. Those are the two candidates that we have to elect from here in the 2020 election. Last year's election, we had 138 million Americans come out and vote. Sounds like a lot, but what we do need to understand is that's only 58.1% of registered voters. That means a little over half of the registered voters are all that showed up to vote. We cannot let that happen again here in 2020. We need every American's voice to be counted. We can't hope that everyone goes out and votes and our voice is represented. That's not how this election is going to work. We all need to show up at the polls on election days. This is several months away. Seniors and the most vulnerable, we understand if you have to mail in your ballots. We really hope that come after election, we're not coming back to you with a scandal although we're almost positive that's going to be the case, depending on the number of ballots and if that number of mail-in ballots is the difference between the presidency, rest assured, there will be problems. So in 2008, we had 61.6%, which is one of the highest elections we've had in recent years. I feel with this pandemic, the mass ability for mail-in votes, I really think this election is going to be higher than 60% of a turnout. And I think that's mostly because, number one, whether or not you're for Trump or against Trump, let's say you're for Trump. You understand that this election, more than any other, you need to continue this, the momentum that he started, and we need to establish a grounds for competition. Because right now, the people that would be coming out to vote would be those coming out for a change. That's Joe Biden. However, what all of Trump's people are now realizing is that is what's going to happen. People are going to come out in groves to make a change. So therefore, Trump's people have to come out in even higher groves and vote. So what this entire election is going to come down to, and as dumb as this might sound, it's the turnout for voting, people showing up to vote, because that is what's going to make or break the presidential election in 2020. Let's go over who the candidates are. We're going to give you a little bit of a brief background of each candidate. I'm going to go over which platforms and which stance in each platform that they're taking. This way it can help you start to formulate and establish a base for who you will be voting for. I'd like you to enter this election right now with a, a blank slate. I don't want you to enter this election with the preconceived notion that either Donald Trump is a terrible human being or Donald Trump is the most amazing man on earth. Because, I hate to say it, most people aren't voting for Joseph Biden. They're voting against Donald Trump. That's neither here nor there at this point, only because 
That difference between those two is what's going, like I said, to make or break this election. So are we going to have enough of Joe Biden's supporters and anti-Trump members? Because that's the only way Joe's going to win. Or are Donald Trump supporters going to go out in groves and vote for him? And those that weren't as impressed by the lackluster Joe Biden, I hate to say it, he just doesn't have the momentum, the ambition, or the drive that most presidential candidates have. And in this election, that's going to be huge. We already see through all of the television campaigns that have already been be begun, we can see that Joe Biden's team is trying to speak on his behalf. They're trying to make that fight for him with these attacks on Donald Trump and vice versa. Donald Trump is trying to attack the fact that Joe Biden is not a very outgoing individual. He may be able to speak, but he doesn't have the, uh, the drive or the, the personality or the persona that Donald Trump carries. So let's start with Donald Trump since that's the most familiar candidate that we're all with. Donald Trump is 74 years of age. He has a bachelor's degree from Penn State University. He was divorced twice and he's currently married for the third time to the first lady, our current first lady, Melania Trump, Melania Trump. And he has five children with various wives. And for some reason, everyone is so obsessed with the fact that Mr. Trump does not have a dog. So that is his family, that is his age, and that is his educational background. He owns a multitude of businesses, as we all know. He has his own little conglomerate. He has his hotels, he has his casinos, he has his whole little world, if you will. However, he gave all of that up to run for president. He gave up his salary and donated his salary this year and last year and all four years, as a matter of fact. He has recirculated his income rather than take a paycheck, which is something that most presidents will not do. Now, with that said, let's go over the policies and what Donald Trump actually stands for. We all know who Donald Trump is as far as the crash, rude, harsh individual that he is. He is an extremely, extremely smart businessman. He is brilliant when it comes to economics, even though, yes, some of his businesses have gone bankrupt. That's just because he surrounds himself with people that are not competent, and he tends to cause a distraction and force them out before they have the opportunity to conclude their services. So that, and we see that with the presidency and his staff. He's gone through more staff than most presidents ever have. But with that said, he's also gotten done more than most recent presidents have. So while there is mayhem, there's a method to his madness. So let's look at the issues. We have climate. Does Donald Trump necessarily believe in climate as, let's say, Joe Biden does? Absolutely not. While Donald Trump understands global warming and he believes that there is a scientific backing to these things, he does not feel that the government needs to overstep its boundaries and force a mass amount of money into these things. So between the two candidates, obviously, if you have a favor for global uh, warming and climate change, and you think that's a severe issue that we need addressed, like AOC does within the next eight years, then Donald Trump is definitely not the candidate for you as far as climate goes. Because yes, Joe Biden is 100% for climate, uh, climate control, climate change, and global warming. So if climate is one of the platforms that you feel is extremely important for your candidate, then perhaps Joe Biden would be your candidate. As far as the economy goes, obviously Donald Trump is huge for trade and for foreign trade and domestic trade. He is trying to bolster the domestic gross product. He is trying to force Americans to purchase American made products. And he's trying to force tariffs and taxes on these businesses outside the country and force businesses to reconsider and reevaluate and open business here and manufacturing back up here in the United States. As well as foreign tariffs and trades, he is extremely high on those tariffs. He's taxed the crap out of China, which is a whole nother ball game. And um, basically he's trying to bolster American product. He doesn't want us so dependent on exterior products. Joe Biden, while he does want to bolster, that isn't his primary goal as far as the economy goes. Joe Biden is more along the lines of the middle class American. He's not so business oriented as he is tax driven. He wants to reduce taxes for the middle class. He wants to focus on the tax brackets and bolster the economy through tax and tax relief, 
which is a good approach. But right now, and in the stance we're in, and the fact that we have lost so much in business and so much in finance, and frankly, the position that our country in economically, while Donald put us in an amazing position, we're currently somewhere where if we took the stance that we're focusing on American and not necessarily trading as much and not focusing as much on the taxes, we will not rebuild American economy. It will not come back. The business structure that we're used to just will not continue to function because the funding isn't there. The taxes and the tariffs that Donald's imposed are to force American companies to utilize American-made products. Whereas, if we go back to the reduced taxes, so on and so forth, that lowers the income, that lowers the money, and we're going to be looking to those external sources to import those goods. So it's very important to understand the strongest economy will go with Donald Trump. Education. Education is a huge platform as far as Americans go, and especially now more than ever. Everything is going to be amplified as a result of this COVID virus, and these platforms now mean more than ever. Because now, Donald Trump, while he doesn't want to cut funding to schools, what he does want to do is put a stronger enforcement or a stronger oversight in these things. Because he's seeing so much money go into these programs, but he's not seeing the turnaround that, that should be coming from that kind of government investment. And I'm not even saying financial turnaround. I'm saying the score, the scores aren't there. The scholastic results just aren't there. So what he wants to do is reevaluate the school system, reevaluate the whole entire college system, look into where these funds are going, make sure that there is a balanced or a centralized financial state for these colleges. Now, Joe Biden, while he wants to do the same thing and build a centralized college system, he is more focused on relieving the debt. So once you get the debt, relieving it. Whereas Donald Trump thinks the debt is necessarily yours, where it, but more funding options should be available. So Joe Biden is kind of climbing towards the Bernie Sanders uh, and refund and um, forgive these loans, whereas Donald wants you to work them off or get a job and work them off, or if you don't have a job within your field, then you can work on forgiveness. The Second Amendment is one of my personal big things. The right to bear arms for Americans is essential because it's part of our Constitution, it's part of our Bill of Rights, it's what makes America, America. Donald Trump is 100% for the rights of the gun owner. He believes things should be left as is, with the exception that background checks and those things need to be stronger delegated and a, a, more, a, a stronger group should be enforcing these things, whereas you have someone like Joe Biden who wants to eliminate, literally eliminate all assault rifles. He wants to limit the clip size, limit the bullet size, and put all kinds of stipulations and rules in place. Whereas Donald Trump doesn't necessarily want to add rules. He just wants to enforce the rules that are in place and strengthen them, not add them. So obviously Democrats are always going to be anti-Second, not anti-Second Amendment, but strongly opposed to a lax Second Amendment. Whereas Obviously, Republicans are more Second Amendment based. So if your guns are important to you, obviously Donald Trump would be your candidate. Immigration. You can have either candidate in this category for the simple fact it depends on what you think is the right thing. Donald Trump believes that you should go through the extreme process of entering this country and you should not step foot in this country until you've gone through the proper channels. He's putting walls up on each border, trying to make everyone else pay for them, Obviously, it's not working as he anticipated, but he wasn't a president before he became president. He was unaware of the way that politics really functioned. So as far as him coming through with his promise, I don't necessarily think that he failed us. I think he's doing his very best to come through with what he promised, but I just don't think that he understood things as much as, let's say, another candidate may have that had spent their whole life in politics politics, which is another reason Joe Biden would be a fantastic candidate. He has a background in politics. He was a vice president. But now we have Donald Trump, who was president. He was put into a presidency and has literally been put through the ringer, an impeachment, a viral outbreak that forces our country closed. And we're still here. Our economy is still flowing. People are still doing well. The only thing I see 
is the division among parties. And it's a shame because if we can just stop this bipartisan crap, I wish there wasn't Republican, I wish there wasn't Democrat. I wish each candidate didn't have a name or a party. They just focused on the platform and the topics and the things that matter to the individuals that are voting. There are, your immigration, obviously Donald Trump is fighting for, go through the channels, don't you step foot into our country until so, and if we need to restrict travel bans, so on and so forth, based on terrorism, et cetera, et cetera, so be it. Whereas you have Joseph Biden, who feels that sanctuary cities deserve to have, you know, their income and their not have any kind of cuts in federal funding. He believes that the border should be not open, but our border should be more welcoming and there should be more circumstances in which, you know, children can enter the country, so on and so forth. So obviously Democrats have a more lax immigration policy. Republicans are going to have the more stringent immigration policy. And our last topic that we're going to be discussing today is health care. Health care for the next few months, if it's coronavirus related, obviously it's going to be covered. But come November, when election comes to push the shove, we know that health care is going to be another huge topic. It all boils down to, are you comfortable with Obamacare? Or did Obamacare take you away from the physician that you were used to, force you to use a network you're not comfortable with, and then pay funds that you can't afford? Healthcare should be not necessarily a choice. It should be mandatory so that the burden doesn't fall on the taxpayer. But at the same time, there should be more of a choice on what you're able to utilize, who you're able to go through, and the rate to which you're willing to do so. As far as Obamacare goes, what they try to do is create a centralized system more familiar to Canada where everybody goes through one or if you don't have the funds, it's provided. If you have the money, it's provided, then you have to pay so on and so forth based on your income. And then if your employer offers the insurance, then obviously you'd go through that. That's what Obamacare is. However, what Donald Trump is trying to do is to reform that and pull away these government programs and allow you to utilize your independent insurance programs and your independent health care providers. This way, you're able to go to the physician that you want and you're not forced to choose from a list to which you're not comfortable. Many people, when they signed up for Obamacare, they lost their PCP, which is your primary care physician. The people that they were comfortable with, the person that knew who they were, they lost all that. And that's what Donald Trump is trying to do away with with his health care policy, is basically to give the choice back to the people. So that is where we stand on our candidates and the major six categories and to where they fall. Over the next few months, we're going to have a substantial amount of videos and we're going to go over all of these categories in great detail. We're going to give exact campaign platform policies and where they plan to go with things and on which date they plan to do it. We're going to be covering all of the rallies, all of the debates, and we're going to try to present to you the best unbiased political view of the upcoming election that we possibly can. Keep in mind, this election is going to be extremely dirty. You're going to hear things that should never be spoken and they will be extremely un-American. I know this is going to be the fact. We have to look beyond that and we have to focus on the issues, people. Don't necessarily look at the person, look at the issue. See if the candidate is capable of doing the job the correct way. Not if you like them. I don't like my boss. I don't like certain people. I shouldn't say that. But I don't like certain people. And what that simply means is it's life. You may not like someone, but if they're good at their job and they can put you in a place to succeed, then that's what we need. If they're capable of doing both, then fantastic. But where we stand right now is we have two candidates, both of which have a great track record, great platforms, but they're opposites. And we have to make sure that we are balancing the direction the right way. This is our very first introduction to the election 2020. We hope you got a little bit of a background on each candidate and we hope you have an idea of where we stand as Americans at this point. As I mentioned, we will continue to bring you in-depth information and help you to select a candidate that best fits the needs to this country not that fits the needs to a color, such as red or blue. This is American. We're red, white, and blue. We don't need to keep things separate. Thank you for watching. Good luck in the upcoming months. And ready to vote in November.
Remember, November 3rd, we vote because that is America. My name is Corey Camasso. Thank you for watching. And this is Critical Political Thinking.